This video is brought to you by Repl.it, a powerful platform for educators, learners, and developers that makes coding and collaborating easy. Use the name Sean Pritchard in the link below to sign up today and start programming in your browser. All right, so before we actually get into learning about the higher order function and seeing the examples for some of these data structures and how iteration and looping actually works in JavaScript, uh, let's talk about these data structures. Uh, before we go forward. Now we've worked with arrays. I'm sure everybody has seen an array once in their life. If you use Python, these are known as lists. And basically an array holds a list of primitive values, um, objects, words, strings, symbols, and we can put all kinds of different information in here. And it's iterative, meaning that we can access the index value. So if I was to put one, two, three here, um, we'd have an index value of zero uh, to mark that position, meaning we can go through that array and pull out information or destroy information within that position based on our method or the function that we use to do so. Um, but we have that capability, it's iterative, and that's what iterative actually means. It means we can loop through these different values. Now, an array, like I said, is just a basic list and it's just a, you know, a basic reference type. Uh, very basic and we have objects as well which can hold key value pairs of data now unlike the array we cannot iterate through an object and an object is limited to only having numbers strings or symbols as a key that means I can't put another object here um, as a key value pair for this I can't use a, a, a key right here that is another object we are limited to what we can do with this object because of its construct um, and therefore we have these other data structures which help us to do these things and one of these is called a map a map is ordered and iterable it is a data structure which helps us in storing data in the form of key value pairs and we can put any type of data as a map meaning we can put objects as a key we can use arrays as a key or we can use numbers strings symbols anything think of it as like a super object um, and we can use it for basically anything and I'll discuss with you later actually where this is applicable in programming but for now just know that you know we can put any type of value or reference um, as a key value for a map but it does have a, a couple limitations is that we are actually storing values whether it's an object an array a number directly in memory and because of this um, we are prone to memory leaks and we'll discuss that later as well but just know that uh, we have another construct called the leak map which is a data structure that is exactly like the map, except it has garbage collection capabilities and holds a weak reference to the actual values of the map that we have, whether it's an object or an array or anything. Um, and we point um, over to the values as opposed to directly working with the values inside of the memory. Um, and this helps prevent memory leaks. And uh, I'm gonna show you some examples of how this is held in memory. Uh, we're gonna actually look and I'm gonna show you how the values uh, differentiate between the memory. And these are, like I said, basically super objects. Uh, and we have two different variations of them. Now, aside from that, we have a set. And it also has a weak set, which holds a weak reference, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. But a set is a special type of collection, and it's a set of values without keys. That means we don't have key value pairs when working with sets but we can insert information, whether it's an object, an array, and we can have sets of all kinds of different information um, as a collection of data uh, with this type of data struct. And it's a collection of items which are unique and no element can be repeated. So that means we can't have duplicate values within our set. And ES6, uh, when they came out with this, the elements can be used to iterate as well. Uh, it has built-in iteration. Uh, and it's iterating through the insertion order of the objects that we're putting in there and I'll show you how this works later But uh, a set is something really awesome that we can use too And this is how we would actually construct that set uh, using this type right here now Like I said, we have a weak set as well, which holds a weak reference value to the actual memory allocation values that are set in the memory and as opposed to directly working with those values in objects inside of the memory uh, we just have a reference to them uh, so that way we can change them or manipulate them or you know pull out and review different types of data um, without messing with whatever's in the memory and we'll see how important this is here in just a, a, a minute but just understand these data structures have built-in iteration and that means this allows us 
to loop through values and object elements um, like we do with an array. Uh, we can access different index values and we can access uh, information within the maps and within the sets where we couldn't do so with basic objects. Hey, do you want to know what type of gear I'm using or what type of computer build I've got? Or maybe you're just looking for quality gear that has been tested and researched personally by me. Well, if so, head over to kit.co forward slash Sean Heath to find out.